Hello there and welcome to the studio. My name is Matthew Palmer and today on 10 Minute Watercolour I want to show you how to paint a beautiful sunset painting. Do make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be kept informed of up and coming um, watercolour lessons and tips and tricks and tutorials on the channel. Also, give us a thumbs up and pop your comments in the comment box below. A quarter imperial sheet of watercolour paper, 11 by 15 inch in size. This is a knot or medium grain surface. You get a smooth, a middle or knot and a rough. This is a knot surface stuck with all four, um, stuck on all four sides with a good quality masking tape to a piece of wood. This is my own brand of paper, Matthew Palmer paper. All the products we're using are available on my website, which you can see just here, or the w's.watercolor.tv. The paints I'm using are my own brand of paints as well, Matthew Palmer watercolor paints. Here, for example, we've got natural gray. We'll talk about the paints as we go through the picture. The brushes, got three brushes, large, medium, small here. This one is a large Matthew Palmer Super Point. Again, my own brand of Super Pointy brushes, but it's basically a size 20 brush. Here we've got a size 10 or a medium Super Point, and here, we have a small super point. Now let's get straight into this. I've popped the colours in there. I've got some kitchen paper here as well. In fact, I'm going to take, take a round coin and fold in half a piece of kitchen paper and wrap that coin in to that, like so. So we've wrapped that up there. And what I want to do here is wet the page, basically from top to bottom. It doesn't really matter which direction we go just wet the page i normally say twice but you'll soon learn the watercolor paper that you're working on each sheet of paper is different so this is a good lesson if you're new to painting a good beginner first picture that's had a couple of good coats of water we'll go straight to the palette and yes you can use your own versions of these colors but i'm simply using some natural orange here. Of course you can mix an orange from a yellow and a red should you need to, but a nice vibrant orange on the brush straight across. Look at that beautiful natural orange there. There's obviously a thousand variations of, of colours out there, but this particular one is natural orange. Bring it right down to the bottom. Bring it right up. Don't be afraid to use the colour quite heavy, especially on a sunset. They're quite thick with the paint there. Bring it in, beautiful. Sweep it down. And then what we'll do is we'll jump back over to the palette. Just a quick rinse of the brush. We'll always wipe away that excess water. Now, there's no water in the palette as such, just what's on the brush. I'm going to be using some natural violet which I've got here. Now if you've not got natural violet you can just use a bit of blue and red. We'll take some natural violet here. Quite strong you can see I'm sort of mixing it into the brush there and we're going to take this colour which is quite heavy and we're going to go in this corner. Look how strong that paint is beautiful. It's like a bluey violet. Cross the brush over as you come down start to leave some lines and try and ease the pressure off the brush so you get them little lines coming through look how nice that is that's your watercolor sky i mean that would constitute a watercolor sky but what we can do is go a little bit further here um, and i'm just going to shoot back over to the palette making sure that color is nice and thick i mean that is quite strong paint there you can see it it is quite useful to have kitchen paper to tap off the excess if you find your paints going all over the place and you'll always see me rotate the brush, but I'm just being a bit more precise with this sky now. I'm just putting a bit more time into the way the lines go in here. So can you see, I'm just kind of making use of this tip of the brush. Feel free to use small brushes, should you need to. What we'll do next is we'll take this coin here. Now this coin is simply wrapped in a piece of kitchen paper and we'll decide where we're going to pop the sun quite low down on this painting I think. Probably around here somewhere. It's going to give it a little press and remove it and you can see it leaves that little shape. It's quite effective and literally that is just simply a little bit of, it's a coin wrapped in tissue. It's as simple as that. Now I am going to be taking a size 10 brush. I'm going to take some red. This is natural red. You could use crimson here or rose madder. 
and mix it with a bit of the orange so it's not quite as vibrant and just use what we call a dry brush which is removing the excess on the kitchen paper back to here and we're nice and close into this now we're going to just do some little twisty actions with the brush we're going to twist get stray hair on there twist the brush and the paper's still wet because I spent quite a bit of time uh, making sure that things were still wet here. So I'm just basically twisting away this sort of red, deep red colour. You can see it's quite a vibrant colour. You could always mix in a bit of other colours into this as well if you want to. And I want to sneakily add a little bit of this colour coming through sun now if you're thinking that colour has gone a bit purple I've, I've sort of dropped in a bit of the violet that helps on the tissue and you just sort of twist the brush but you've got to remove that excess on the tissue for this to work now I'll be honest with you, the sky would work just as well without these clouds. So don't worry too much if you didn't want to put the clouds in. But that little bit just overlapping. Of course, the paper's dry where the sun is because you've stamped it off with the the tissue. But I did a few little wispy clouds. And then what you can do to soften all this in is very simply clean the brush really, really well. Squeeze it through some tissue. Even make the brush go a little bit flat if you want to. And then what you can do is you can just... Take your brush in and give it a bit of a drag, a bit of a soften. Almost kind of soften these ends away. And if I mould the, the tip of the brush, it's a little bit damp, I just sort of tickle the colour where it overlaps. And it just makes it look a little bit more soft, a little bit more kind of incidental, really, is, is what you want to have here. So don't be afraid about having too much water on the brush but not soaking if it was soaking it might actually cause cauliflowers now while that's drying off let's get back to the palette here because what we're going to do is just give that a few moments to dry and paint in a little bit of a landscape but it it needs to be dry now obviously what you can do is you can force that drying process with a hairdryer I've got a heat gun over there obviously being very careful near water the water's here the heat guns over there so you can force the drying process with a hairdryer or a heat gun should you wish however while it's drying off we can mix up a grey colour now you can mix the grey from blue with a bit of red and a bit of yellow so you can use primary colours but but a really good way to do it is to use natural grey. It's a ready-made version. It's called Matthew Palmer's Natural Grey. Just a quick Google search, you'll find the grey. It's such a useful colour. Um, or have a look on the website, which is, of course, all the w's.watcolor.tv. Beautiful. There it is, natural grey. Now, this paper is going to take a little while to dry. So that's nice and dry now. And I want to use the grey which is quite strong with a size 10, which is the medium size brush here. I'm just going to paint in some distant hills. The paper is a little bit damp still, so that's fine. Just give it a bit of a wobble. Nervous shake with the brush will give character to those hills. Bring it in. Clean the brush really well, really well. And give it a couple of taps on tissue so you've got a damp brush no more than two taps and then just use water to basically fade that down i always think that when you paint in a sky it's quite important to have some kind of a landscape so that little bit of a blend down here I'll just clean the brush one more time and it just allows me to add a little bit of extra that's nice and dry i've just used the heat gun or like I say a hair dryer and then you've got a choice here, so you can even use, use your size 10 brush and stipple 
into a fairly strong grey. The brush goes spiky. Not the best thing to do with a good quality brush. Or you can purchase one of these Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush uh, brushes. This is designed for the job. Yeah, these are really, really popular brushes. Strong bit of grey. Snip all the brush. Always good to give it a little bit of a tap on some kitchen paper. But it's nice and spiky. And then what we can do is stipple in silhouette of some trees just coming across this area here. So I'm using this kind of slope on this brush. These brushes have been around since the late 90s. I designed these in 1997, these brushes. So they've been around a long time. And you can see how effective they are at giving a lovely tree effect. Obviously, it's a sunset, so everything's a little bit silhouetted. If you was painting a scene, of course, in the daytime, you'd use more of a green mixture. Bring that across. Beautiful. Put as much time as you like into the shape and form of these. Always makes a difference if you pop one of these bevel mounts on the picture as well. They always really frame it up well. But there is a quick and simple watercolour. No sketching, just using a few colours. And if you're new to watercolour painting, what a perfect way to start. Now do keep watching for more watercolour hints and tips on the YouTube channel. Again, give us a thumbs up, drop your comments in the comments box below. And remember to hit that subscribe and notification bell. Now, if you like my way of working, you'd like to join me on a live virtual watercolour workshop. These are wonderful because these workshops happen pretty much every week and these are £10 UK price, but you can take part from anywhere around the world. We've got one coming up this weekend, which is actually on the 15th of January. Take a look here on my website, all the w's.watercolour.tv. And at the top of the screen is the one that's coming up um, on the, the date closest to the time you're watching this this uh, tutorial. So as it happens here, it says book now uh, virtual workshop on the 15th of January. And the subject we're doing this Sunday on this £10 live workshop is paint a colourful mandarin duck on a beautiful springtime river. These are beautiful workshops. You can watch and paint along at any time. Once you buy this workshop, it's yours to keep forever. You do not have to be there live on Sunday the 15th of Jan. You can buy this if you're watching this video in 2024 or 2025, you can still purchase this workshop by going to the website. They are always available. It starts at 10 a.m. UK time, but remember you can drop in and out at any time. And the really cool thing about these workshops is it only uses three basic brushes. The, the three brushes we've used today, so it uses the 20, the 10, the 6, and it just uses three primary colours. So you want a yellow, a red and a blue, so you could have natural yellow light, natural red, natural blue, we might have French ultramarine or cobalt blue, crimson or rose madder and cadmium yellow. That's all you need, three colours, three brushes and a bit of watercolour paper and you will produce a beautiful watercolour. Uh, following nice step-by-step -step instructions. Thank you for joining me on this 10 minute watercolour lesson. I'll see you next time for more watercolour painting. Take care.